Well, hello, GE 101 students. Uh, today we have the privilege of, of hearing from Professor Barbara Elsey from the math department here at Bluegrass Community and Technical College, and I'd just like to welcome her and thank you very much for being here to share some uh, strategies and tips with us. All right, as your teacher has told you, my name is Barbara Elsey, and I have been teaching here at BCTC for 13 years. And very recently, I decided that study skills needed to be incorporated into my math class. And study skills specifically for math. And I've been doing that this semester, and I'm happy to say my students are doing extremely well, much better than they did before, learning these study skills. So I have some tips for you that I kind of drew together. It's kind of hard to talk for 15 minutes about all the different things I'm talking about with my students. So I've tried to pull together just the main points for you, but I also have some handouts that you can look through on your own that might help you with your math classes in the future. All right, I want to give that out to you first and then go over these main tips and discuss some of the things that you may not know about that will help you get through a math class. All right, so let me hand these out first. I'll try to move back in front of this camera. I'm not used to being on camera. All right. Um, but let's look at the very first one, and this can be the same as for other classes, being an active learner, okay? Now, what that means is, like right now, most of you are in what we call passive mode. You're listening, okay? Active means when a teacher asks you questions, you answer it. You stay active. You stay engaged in what's going on in class. All right, and how many of you have a tendency just kind of to sit and take notes and not engage in what's going on in class? How many of you did? Okay. Yeah. So you want to think about being active in a math class. Answer questions. Even if you're wrong, that's okay. The instructor wants to know that you're engaged and you're working hard and you're trying in class. Okay? That keeps you alert and awake. And how many of you have a tendency to kind of drift off in a math class? I will admit this myself, and I am a math teacher, okay? So, stay engaged, stay listening to the instructor, and answering questions when they are asked, and that will help you in your math class. Sit down front, right down here. Those of you in front are already engaging in a very good skill. Sit down front, it keeps you awake and alert. This is true of any class, not just math. Try working the example that's on the board ahead of the instructor if you can. Usually an instructor will do several examples. After that first one, and you've seen how it's done, try working ahead. That keeps you actively involved. It also tells you if you're doing things right. Okay? And then ask questions when you don't understand. Okay? Math instructors do love to have questions from their students. I know you may not think that, and you may think, oh, it's a stupid question. But I guarantee you, if you have that question, there's at least five other people in class that have that question. Don't be afraid to ask questions in a math class. All right, now, the next thing I've got here is take notes. Everything that the math teacher writes on the board is important. Write it down. And on the next page of your handout, I even have given you some ideas for taking notes. Now, I don't have time to go through all of this today, and I actually spend the whole day with my class on how to take notes in math class. But this is probably going to help you with that, so you can read through that on your own to help you get through taking notes in a math class, because it is different than in other classes. But a lot of people have a tendency not to take notes, and you definitely want to do that in a math class. Otherwise, you've got nothing to go back to and look at when you have some difficulty with a problem. Okay, so take notes. Learn what learning style is best to you. And you've probably talked about learning styles in this class. And it depends upon which particular theory you were looking at. But there's visual learners, there's auditory learners, there's kinesthetic learners. Find out which one you are. And to help you out here, I've got on the next page a little short test of learning styles. You can take this on your own and find out which one is more likely to be you. Now, here's the nice thing about this. Even if you've already done this in this particular class, 
on the following pages, there are little things you can do in a math class if you are a visual learner. Things you can do in a math class if you're an auditory learner. Things you can do if you're a kinesthetic learner. Now, fortunately, math lends itself really well to kinesthetic learners. Okay? Visual learners also, because math teachers like to write on the board and it's all up there before you. If you're an auditory learner, though, you got to do some little different things to really get engaged in a math class. Because auditory is a little bit harder in a math class than the other two. Okay? So, there's some little techniques that you can use depending upon which learning style is best for you. And you can go through that on your own, find out what's best for you, and try some of those in your class. All right, next. I've got preparing for a math test is like preparing for a play. If you are in a play, you do not just go in on the day of the performance and do it. Or you don't even study the night before the performance and do it. You're not ready if you just study the night before. You have to have practices every single day for several weeks before the play is performed. Then you have a dress rehearsal and then you have the actual play. Math is like this too. If you practice a little bit of math every single day and then have your dress rehearsal, just your study session, just a couple of hours before the test, then you are ready for the test. It's very difficult to cram for math. Okay, so think of it like a play. Do a little bit of practice every single day and you will be ready for the actual play when it comes. Okay. All right, now, I've also got within here, after your learning inventory, there is another handout that tells you some strategies for taking a test. And we'll talk about a few of them that I have on here in a moment, but you can read through this on your own and get some extra information about how to get ready for a math test. And I actually have a few of them up here that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Quiz yourself. This is another way to get ready for a math test. Go back to problems from previous lessons on a continual basis. Um, and one of the things you can do to quiz yourself is every week take your math book. Go back to problems that you've been assigned in your homework. Go to the odds. You all know odd answers are always in the back of your book. Pick out some of the homework problems that you have been assigned. Write them down on a sheet of paper. On the other sheet of paper, put your answers to those homework problems. Then, after you've got a bunch of those homework problems from different sections that you've had throughout the week, take your own quiz. If you got what's on the answer sheet, you're doing good. If you miss some things, you know, oh, I need some work on this. Maybe I need to see my teacher and go back over this, or maybe I just need to do more of them until I've got the skill down. Quiz yourself on a regular basis. And you can do it from stuff in your textbook or even from examples your teacher has given you in class. Okay, so do that, and that will really help you to get ready for a test. When taking an exam, brain dump first. Anybody know what a brain dump is? Any ideas what that could be? Write down all that you know first. Yes. Turn it over and write down everything that you know. I hear people tell me all the time, I can't remember all the formulas. The first thing, get when you get your test, turn it over, write down every formula that's in your brain. That way if you get kind of anxious during the test and you forget a formula, you can turn that test over, there it is. Okay? Brain dump first. Teachers don't mind at all if you do that. So take all those formulas you have to have memorized. The moment you get your test, turn it over and do those, write them down so they're ready for you. Second thing is work the easiest problems first. Don't get bogged down on a single problem. I see students get stuck on a problem for 15, 20 minutes and then they don't have time to go do the rest of the test. You don't want to do that. Do the easiest stuff first. Go through, do the easy stuff, then come back to the hard stuff. Okay, so if there's something you don't know, skip it. Do the rest. Come back to that one later. Spend the remaining time on that. Don't let one thing bog you down. Okay? Go back and work the hardest problems after you've done the easiest. And always double check your answers. 
I hear this all the time. I made so many stupid mistakes on the test. If I had just gone back and checked, okay? Double check your answers. It makes all the difference. It can make a 10 point difference on a test just to go back and find all your silly mistakes along the way. Okay, so double check. Use your resources. We have free tutoring here at BCTC for math. It takes place from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. at night. Take advantage of that free tutoring. Most of the time your instructor is available anywhere from 5 to 10 hours a week. Take advantage of your instructor. Believe me, there's very few of our math instructors that don't mind you coming in. I mean, really, I mean, I said that wrong. <laughs> that, that mind you coming in. They want you to use their office hours. And I'm happy to work with students who have questions. So, use the resources of your teachers. As well, use the resources of each other. Your teachers don't mind if you get together and work in groups for homework and things like that. So get together. Two minds are better than one. Or three minds is better than one. Use your resources. Okay? Don't allow yourself to engage in negative self-talk. This is probably one of the strongest things that I can recommend to you. Don't say to yourself, I've never been good at math. I'm never going to be good at math. That's self-defeating. Okay? Say to yourself instead, I'm responsible for my progress in my math class. I will be patient and determined in pursuing my goal to do well in math class. And part of that is saying, I'm going to take advantage of those resources right there so that I do better. I'm smart enough to pass math, and I guarantee you all of you are. Again, you just got to take advantage of those resources. And I will succeed and then celebrate my success. I'm always so happy when my students tell me, I put my test on my refrigerator. Because they're so happy that they got an A or even a B or a C sometimes. For some of them, that's the best they've done so far. So realize you've got to celebrate once you do well. You've got to reward yourself. All right, now, if you get anxious during a test, and a lot of people do, a lot of people go on and tell them, I understand everything at home, but when I get to taking my test, it just all drops out. They get anxious. They get scared. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Count to 10. It's okay to ask your instructor to get up and move around. Sometimes that helps to relieve your anxiety. I've seen people put music on while they take a test. For most of us, this is fine. It's just ask your instructor, can I listen to my music? It helps me relax. Okay? Turn the test over and compose yourself if you need to. It is better to take a few minutes just to get yourself together than to lose the whole hour to anxiety and not be able to do anything on that test. Okay? So, take a deep breath. Move around if you have to. That's okay. And once again, I will reiterate, practice problems every day. It's just like a play. You have to practice for the performance. Okay? And then reward yourself when you do well. Always reward yourself when you do well. Okay? It's a great thing to know that you did well, and you need to reward yourself. And then you will do even better in the future because you know you've got that reward at the end. Okay? Any questions that I've got?